Hey everybody, welcome back to Faraday Research. It's Wednesday morning here, and um, I decided I'm gonna do this little video here, which is actually a very important video. Uh, before we do that, don't forget to sus subscribe in the bottom right-hand corner. And also I got the links for my Bitcoin and my Patreon in the description. And also I'm gonna have this document that was uh, written by Tesla uh, back in 1892, I believe. Um, he wrote this very important document regarding spark gaps, what they are, what they do, and how to tune them. So this is a very important little video. I'm just starting to experiment with these, uh, uh, with this um, scenario now, and I'm going to tell you about it. So, what he was talking about in this document regarding spark gaps is being able to tune the spark gap. Now he did utilize this technology in his hairpin circuit, as well as other spark gaps down the road. And the way he was tuning his spark gaps is by using magnets, okay? So the, bet, uh, the thing you have to remember, because everything here is steel or uh, chrome or whatever, or copper, you have to get ferrite magnets. Now, if you're going to use neodymiums, fine, but they cannot have a conductive material on them. Okay, so for this experiment, I don't have neodymiums that are not zinc coated. So I'm using six ferrite uh, disc magnets. Okay, they're not very powerful, but they actually do the effect. So what he was getting at is he calls it quenching the spark or the break. He refers the uh, spark gap as a break. Now, terminology back then, he used different words, uh, words today. We call it an arc. He called it the break. Um, it's just a matter of how you uh, perceive it. And Anyways, so he used magnets. Now, the magnets he were using, they were actually trimmed at a 45 degree angle. So it can get right in close where that spark gap is. So the first test I'm going to show you is without the magnets. And you're going to notice that the arcs are going to be jumping around a lot. They'll be like disorganized. Okay, so I've got it hooked up right now to just my LED because that's not really my concern right now. My concern right now is tuning the spark. And when you get that spark gap tuned just right, you can actually dial frequency. So instead of having a bulb flicker on and off and be noticeable with the magnets, I was able to tune it to the point where I actually got 60 hertz exactly and there was no pulsation. So this is very important when you're working with spark gap technology. Also too, it helps your amperage and also your power consumption. I noticed now um, without controlling magnets, It'd be out of control, out of phase, uh, all over the place, jumping all over the place, and it would cause my amperage on my on my prime mover to go up. Now I can keep the amperage down to like uh, 800 milliamps or even below and still be able to power something at the same potential and also at a better frequency. So I'm going to show you first test is gonna be without the magnets, to, but oh, sorry, in the arrangement between, I have the, I don't have magnets on these two spark gaps, but I have the one in the middle. Now the middle break is important because that will set the tone for the last one to give just a little vibration in order to give it the effect of uh, alternating current. So, I got two, three neo, uh, sorry, three ferrite um, magnets. Now the poles have to be north south, so it's going to be in between the gap, and it's going to be pushing that field in, into the. All right, so you don't want repulsion; you want to grab, you know, north south. Okay, whether you put north at the top or north at the bottom, it's irrelevant. It's a matter if it's pulling together. Okay. So the first test I'm going to do is without it. I want you to watch all three spark gaps. This one, this one, and this one. In this test, they'll be all over. They'll be jumping around. They'll be disorganized. When I do the second test with the magnets, 
this spark gap here and this spark gap here will almost be stationary. They won't be, they'll be moving a little bit, but not nearly as much as it was without the magnets. That means the frequency is all over. It's jumping. There's no consistency in the frequency. And that's what the problem was with spark gaps in the beginning. And Tesla figured out by putting the magnets, he can now control the frequency of the spark gap and make it more consistent. So, and that's the, in the document. I'm going to post it in the description. So read the document. I don't care if you have to read it 10, 15 times, but read the document, uh, fully read everything and understand what he was talking about. All right. So the first test is going to be no magnets. Watch all the spark gaps are going to be jumping around, jittering a lot, disorganized. Okay, so that light was flickering. Now when I do it with the magnets, that flickering is now going to disappear. So I'm going to put uh, okay. that set in the middle. That one there. All right. So we got the two sets of magnets. I'll just give you a top shot view of how it's going to look. And I'll also hold it up like this too, so you can see it while it's uh, running. And you'll notice this one here and this one here are gonna be a lot more organized. This one here is gonna have a bit of jitter to it, but that's the frequency. So now we're tuning the spark gap. Now he used pointed pointed uh, magnets. So I try, I'm using flat, that's all I have available for me now. I could get some magnets cut if I really wanted to get serious with it. But for proof of concept, it does work. All right, and he was doing this in 1892. All right, just set this down for a second. All right, here we go. Okay, it's flickering a lot on the camera. Really hard to really show you. Yeah, see the camera. The camera's not doing any justice. So it's one of those situations. See that light now is completely solid. You, there is no flicker. It is a solid waveform. I have to tune it. It's like tuning a, it's like tuning a tuning fork. You have to really kind of play with it, make sure these gaps are correct. If you get a steady stream arc, it can short itself out. So it, it, the the camera really doesn't do any justice to actually show you, which really sucks. But um, definitely, you can see the difference in the light. The light is not flickering where before. Without the magnets, it's flickering. So definitely the magnetic poles do have an effect on the frequency of the spark gap. And he calls it quenching. When you quench the spark, you can control it. And uh, uh, control the waveform. So I'll be to, I just started playing with this literally this morning. So I'm kind of new to this. But yeah, it does work and it takes less power. Now, I'm not really concerned about how much power output I'm putting right now, uh, about controlling the frequency. The frequency is everything. If you can get the frequency right, it's going to make everything else down the road a lot easier to work with. So don't criticize me. Oh, you're using LED. Oh, you should be lighting up halogen. That's not the point. The point I'm trying to get at is that spark gap, if you tune it properly, it is going to do a lot of good work. Like, it's going to be way more consistent. You're not going to get those, like, uh, sparks that are just going to flashes. I don't get that with this now. 
where I get like this quick arc and you get a big flash of power. And it also starts putting a lot of amperage on my load. So, yeah, uh, this thing I'm definitely going to be toying with. Um, now, relating this with the Don Smith generator, I've made this... Oops, there goes my stand. There goes my... Uh, that's my little transformer that I've been working on. So, uh, I've designed it, and uh, it's got about 40 turns of 22 gauge wire in the ferrite core and I'm going to be toying with this one and I'm also going to toy with the big one we'll see what see what's going to happen with that so yeah a lot of testing a lot of fine tuning um I definitely like this magnet thing that Tesla was talking about if I can get pointed magnets I will um yeah so definitely something here he recommends that you have it on every single spark gap that you use and he goes by either one three six nine so in my case i'm using three spark gaps and uh yeah i'm just i gotta play with it i gotta test it so it's more proof of concept it definitely does work and it doesn't um, it does uh improve my frequency coming off the spark gap it's not like going wild so i just thought i'd throw that at you uh this wednesday morning Again, if you haven't subscribed, bottom right-hand corner, give me a thumbs up if you like the video. And uh, yeah, we'll see everybody soon. Take care.